Hi, my name is Tony Rodriguez, and I'm a second year graduate student at Caltech working with Shrikal Kearney in the ZTF Variable Group. Today, I'll be presenting my work on microlensing using the Zuki Transient Facility. This is a work primarily carried out with former Caltech postdoc Shemek Mruz, now faculty at the University of Warsaw. I'll begin with some background on microlensing. It requires a luminous source, the star in the background, and a lens, a dark object passing between us and the source. According to general relativity, this lensing object will warp space-time and bend the light around it to be focused toward us at Earth. What we then see is a transient brightness of the source as seen in the, in the animation below. This is a very rare event simply because of this geometric alignment that is required for us to see gravitational microlensing. And the reason that we care about these very, very rare events is because they're the only way for us to study dark objects. These dark objects, again, are the lenses. And these lenses can be free floating planets, planets distant from their host star, stellar mass black holes, and brown dwarfs, just to name a couple. In particular, we are sensitive to objects between the highest mass known neutron stars and the lowest mass black holes, this mass gap that's very interesting to probe. The geometry leads to a lensing angle known as the Einstein angle, which only depends on the mass of the lens and the distance to the source and the distance to the lens. And this lensing angle, this characteristic angle, is unresolvable by telescopes from Earth for the most part. And instead, we just see this amplification, this light curve. And the duration of this light curve is a characteristic time scale known as the Einstein time scale, which for events toward the galactic bulge is about 25 days. This should be longer for events toward the plane, because as you can see here the, in, in the equations, the time of, of the characteristic time depends on the distance of the source, distance to the lens, the mass of the lens, and the relative velocity between the two objects. This relative velocity is smaller for events viewed toward the galactic plane, so therefore this Einstein time should be longer. I'll be talking about this microlensing parallax, which is not your typical parallax, it's not the inverse of the distance to the object, rather it's a projected Einstein angle of this microlensing event onto Earth's orbit. This is a very important quantity to measure if it's able to be measured because this provides an independent constraint on the lens mass. And the reason we're looking toward the galactic plane is because we have longer duration events which give us a better measurement of this microlensing parallax, which again is what provides this independent constraint on the mass lens. And we're finally at a point where ZTF has enough data being a very big survey across the whole northern sky to, to then increase the probability of us observing events toward the, toward the galactic plane. And the methodology behind discovering these events is really to just create a discovery algorithm, to tune it on a few simulated events, to then scan across all of the ZTF data release, and then to calculate detection efficiencies to then quantify how well our algorithm does in discovering these events. The discovery algorithm primarily relies on this von Neumann statistic, which can search for long duration, statistically significant bursts. And what you're seeing here is one of the microlensing light curves. We found 60 microlensing events previously undiscovered out of 500 million ZTF light curves. What you're seeing here is the ZTF G band points and the ZTF R band points scaled up to be plotted on the same light curve. And what you're seeing here is that the light curve of microlensing doesn't depend on color as, as expected. Importantly, three out of these 60 events show the parallax effect, the microlensing parallax effect. And this is, again, this geometric effect that allows us to have an independent constraint on the lens mass. It's seen visually, and it's a statistically better fit than an event, than, than a model not accounting for the, for the microlensing parallax. And what you're seeing here is how we quantify the efficiency of our discovery algorithm. On the right, you're seeing all of the events that we discovered as a function of galactic coordinates. And on the left, you're seeing the efficiency curves for a couple of these ETF fields. So we're, what, you're, what the efficiency is, is the ratio of observed events picked by our algorithm over the number of injected events that we simulate in, into ZTF data. On the whole, you can see that we're able to pick out events roughly uniformly between 10 and 300 days, but for events longer or shorter than this, the efficiency drops because it's difficult to detect those events in the data.
And the main result is that galactic plane microlensing events last about three times as long as those previously found toward the galactic bulge, as expected due to the relative motion of the lens in the source. On average, events toward the plane last about 60 days and toward the bulge last about 20 days. The distribution of the events then provides an independent probe of galactic structure. And what you're seeing on the left is the amount of events plotted as a function of galactic longitude. And there's an exponential drop off of events with a characteristic angle about 37 degrees. And what, the, what this does is this probes the exponentially decreasing density of lenses in our galaxy as a function of longitude. Toward the right, you're seeing the same plot, but as a function of galactic latitude. So there is indeed a drop off of events at higher and lower galactic latitudes, but there is this noticeable lack of events at zero galactic latitude, which is an independent probe of the extinction at the plane of the galaxy. It's just difficult to detect events because there's so much dust in the way. There are longer events as expected at longitude greater than 20 degrees, and there's, there's no trend in latitude um, in our current data set. In conclusion, we found 60 galactic plane microlensing events over ZTF data compiled over three years, and this is the first ever survey of the northern galactic plane. It's been done in the southern plane using OGLE, but it's the first time it's been done in the northern galactic plane. We indeed found that galactic plane events are longer than the bulge, in particular three times as long as bulge events. Galactic properties can be seen in our modest sample because microlensing is an independent probe of galactic structure. A future study will then find the average mass of a dark lens in the galaxy using these events that we've compiled in ZTF data. Future time series astrometry will then give us another independent constraint on the, the lens mass. And then we will be able to find events and classify them as stellar mass black holes, brown dwarfs, low, luminous, low luminosity stars, planets, so on and so forth. Thank you.